Good evening, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. And I'm Tim Seaman. A constitutional amendment to permanently restore voting rights to Iowa felons who have finished their sentence will not be moving forward in the Iowa State House. The news marks the third time now the lawmakers have failed to advance this measure backed by Governor Kim Reynolds. It is our top story at 6. But like in previous years, the Senate did fail to bring it to full committee. And that's why the amendment unanimously passed the Iowa House last week. Proposals to amend the Iowa Constitution must pass two consecutive general assemblies and win a majority vote among state voters. Now, the earliest Iowa voters could now weigh in on that change would be 2024. Last summer, Governor Kim Reynolds signed her own executive order restoring felon voting rights, ending Iowa's status as the last state to require felons to apply individually for that right again. But Reynolds' order could be reversed by future governors. Democratic leaders tonight say not enough is being done on COVID-19 or other important topics as the second funnel week winds down. They're saying that Senate Democrats introduced around two dozen COVID-19 bills with just one becoming a policy. State Representative Jennifer Converse says that there are several issues not moving forward after this week because the Republican majority did not take them up. A couple of the things that haven't moved that frustrated me and that I know a lot of Iowans are going to be frustrated about um, because they're very popular and they've been encouraged by not just um, Democrats, but Republicans and even the governor, the capping insulin at $100, helping, um, you know, Iowans with prescription drug costs. All of these things are things that Iowans, you know, across the board overwhelmingly want. The Senate leaders also called on Governor Kim Reynolds to veto a gun bill that gets rid of the state's requirement to hold a valid permit in order to purchase a gun. Meanwhile, Iowa grocers have lost a legal battle to change the state's bottle bill standard. That leaves the fate of the 40-year-old bottle deposit law up to state legislators. Under a House bill, retailers would be able to reject empty beverage containers as long as that business contracts with a local redemption center. The Senate's version increases the fee paid to redemption centers and allows dealers to refuse to accept beverage containers if there is a nearby redemption center. Now, a different Senate bill would require wholesalers to sell beverages to retailers to place uh, unredeemed deposits in in separate accounts in order to account for. And lawmakers now must find common ground between those two versions. Iowans do like the bottle bill, but we have to be sympathetic to the infrastructure out there. Just because we like something doesn't mean we can pass an unfunded mandate onto all these industries and turn around and say, make it happen, uh, when we know the current system is not sustainable and is collapsing. Uh, whether you're from the grocery side, whether you're from the distributor side, whether you're from the recycling center side, everyone's coming to us with different problems saying that the status quo is not working. Lawmakers say that it's too soon to decide, but they'll need to find a compromise before the funnel deadline, which is tomorrow. A Sioux City man is in custody tonight after leading police on a pursuit Wednesday night. 22-year-old Joshua Green is now charged with felony eluding, driving while intoxicated, and also driving without a license, among other traffic offenses. Police report seeing Green speed down an alleyway in Sioux City before cutting off his lights and getting on I-29. That pursuit ended near Sloan. Deputies noticed drug paraphernalia at Green's feet. He denied using illegal substances, but he did fail a field sobriety test. Another large group of workers is being vaccinated against the coronavirus. Western Iowa Tech Community College and Siouxland District Health joining for a drive through clinic in the college parking lot today. With faculty and staff employees were all eligible until supplies ran out and we were told about 180 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine were available to those uh, coming through that drive through clinic. Or people getting those vaccinations. I said we know we're just that one step closer to everybody wanting to get back to normal. So we appreciate everybody's help with that. That Johnson & Johnson vaccine requires only one injection. Colleges across Siouxland are continuing to gain access to the COVID vaccination uh, from Johnson & Johnson. Uh, that first step of the process underway in many places. That's right. A lot of colleges are favoring it because it's just that one shot, Simple. like you mentioned. Yeah. And as they head home for a break, too, there's been some talk about that the summer months being vaccinated before then. That's right. Well, the wind is still making a bit of a biting chill across Tulane, no doubt. It was quite chilly, but at least uh, it warmed up this evening, and I hear, Scott, uh, warm up in the future.
Yes, we can look forward to some much warmer temperatures in line for the Easter holiday weekend. Today we had some seasonal conditions for the start of April. It's very cold this morning. The temperature descended all the way to 14 degrees in Sioux City. Highs this afternoon mainly in the 50s, but there were a couple of 60s out to the west in Albion and O'Neill. Checking out the Easter holiday weekend, you can see the temperatures will jump higher as it looks like we'll be in the 70s on Friday and Saturday before we have our first 80s of 2021 coming up on Easter Sunday. Quite a treat there. We'll let you know if that lasts through next week in the full forecast in a few minutes. Back to you. I like those eggs, Scott. Nice work. <laughs> right, really cute forecast. Well, trucking across the country for hours with no place to rest. That is where many truck drivers are finding themselves after long days of driving. KCAU 9 reporter Lydia Vasquez joins us live tonight from a truck stop near Singing Hills, and she's explaining why truckers say it's just a major safety concern they're facing. That's right, Tim and Sophie. I spoke with a trucker today who tells me after around 7 p.m., it's almost impossible to find a spot to park and rest. Now, because of that, trucker William Needham says it forces drivers to park in unsafe places, like on off ramps or on the side of the highway. Needham tells me a lack of parking has never been this bad. There's more and more trucks on the road these days, you know, compared to 30 something years ago when I started. I mean, and the more trucks you get out here, the more parking you need, and there's just not enough for us. Tonight at 10, we'll take a deeper look at some of the major concerns truck drivers say a lack of parking has on them and anyone who drives on the road. Reporting live in Sioux City, Lydia Vasquez, KCAU 9 News. All right, thanks, Lydia. We'll see you at 10. And over in Vermilion, USD faculty today broke ground this afternoon, signaling the start of a new project that has been in development now for more than a decade. All thanks to a generous gift from Delta Dental of South Dakota, the campus raised enough money for the expansion of their medical and science building. That will include more programs now, along with brand new labs and simulation centers for their students. Construction of the new Health and Sciences building is projected to be complete by August of 2023. Well, wildfires can, of course, uh, produce a real dangerous situation, and that is especially so when it's near a residential area. That's right, near homes. Hear from a South Dakota family returning to their house after being evacuated coming up. A sunny and warmer pattern is going to gain traction in Siouxland 80s for Easter Sunday and some rain chances are being noticed for next week. We'll share when those happen in the 9 on 9 forecast. It's right after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. A tale of two days today. Uh, woke up early this guess, morning. Yeah. Uh, Scott says we were in record, near record cold temperatures. And this afternoon, we warmed up to average. Yes, it was really cold outside this morning, Tim and Sophie. The low temperature in Sioux City fell all the way down to 14. But we've had some nice recovery this afternoon for Major League Baseball opening day. Kind of felt like it in Sioux Land with those warmer temperatures this afternoon. The bright sunny skies, as you can see, courtesy of the Port Neal Welding Company from our KCA U9 studio. Here's what's going on now in Sioux City. Our temperature is pretty decent. It's 54 outside right now. A good evening to maybe get the grill out with a south wind of 16 miles per hour relative humidity at 24 percent and the dew point is 18. That is still very low, but we are starting to see some more moisture work in. Looking at temperatures, they're in the 50s and 60s at this time. It's 54 in Sioux City, 52 for Sheldon as well as Orange City and Lamar's. It's 50 degrees right now in Denison and warmer to the west. Current temperature of 61 in O'Neill, 60 in Albion. Meanwhile, just 48, uh, just a tad cooler in a uh, storm lake, I should say. Now, as you look at our 24 hour temperature difference, it's about 10 to 20 degrees warmer than the same time yesterday. So again, starting off April on a good note here with wind from the south directed in between a full moon. And one of our viewers was able to snap a picture of that. As you can see, the moon beams traveling through the cloud cover there. So thanks for passing along that great photo. And if you have one of your own that you want to have shared here on KCA UNI News, all you have to do is go to Zulamproud.com, go to the weather tab and send us your pictures. Tim and Sophie. I love that moon the other night out, yeah. but I didn't get my good camera out. <laughs> so I, I didn't, I get, a I didn't get a camera at all out, but it was very bright, no doubt. Well, Easter is, of course, just around the corner, and for many folks, that means probably <laughs> picking up a rabbit to give to the kids. 
but many people adopt bunnies from their local animal shelters and then quickly return them due to a lack of information when it comes to caring for these furry critters. Now, if you're planning on getting a rabbit, you can find out what you need to know from a local animal expert. That's in a digital exclusive. You'll find on our website right now. That, of course, is SiouxLandProud.com. You can also find that at KCAU9, the new mobile news app. They're cute, but they require a lot of work, more than people think. <laughs> well, recent fires caused dozens of South Dakotans to evacuate their homes, unsure of when they'll able to come back. How a family felt leaving their home as the fire blazed nearby and what they found when they were finally able to return. That's next. Well, fire crews are hoping to contain more of the Schroeder fire that's burning just west of Rapid City. So far, fire crews have been able to contain just 47% of that blaze. It has already burned more than 2,200 acres, while several neighborhoods are still under evacuation orders. But some people have been allowed to go back. Sydney Thorson spoke with the Lockhart family, who recently was able to head back home. Just 20 minutes after they heard about the Schroeder fire, the Lockharts got an unexpected guest. And then all of a sudden the dog's going crazy and there's a, an officer, I guess, someone, an authority downstairs yelling, you got to go now. It was a blur. Oh, my little house. <laughs> what was going through your mind during that time? Um, you know, I don't even know if we know what was going through our minds at the time. It's just a, a moment of panic and, and terror and fear for... Our kids and knowing that, you know, their house that they've lived in most of their life might not be here when we return. For the next 48 hours, the family felt helpless and unsure of what to do. They stayed in a hotel and their camper. It's kind of a homeless feeling and then not knowing if at the end of the day you truly do even have a house to come back to, that this might be literally everything you own now is in this car. And that's really scary, not knowing if you're going to have any of your possessions when you get back. Then, after nearly two days, Amy and her family got word from the Pennington County Sheriff's Office that they could finally return to their homes. I don't know. It's just I'm still kind of in shock that that we are here and that we're this blessed and this fortunate that we get to come home, that we have a house to come home to, and and most importantly, that we're all safe. And we're we're blessed. So the outpouring of help or uh, people willing to help and support, it's a humbling experience. Amy and Chad are grateful for the crews that saved their home, along with all the firefighters still working today and everyone who reached out to help. It really makes you realize how special and amazing people are. They are fortunate. Very fortunate. Hopefully those flames will completely be out before too long. Big day today is baseball is back, but Jake's got a different kind of ball, I think, That's to start right. with. That's right. It's too bad because baseball <laughs> is my favorite sport, but we'll let you digress. Well, we'll, we'll get there, Sophie. Don't <laughs> worry. Well, Luca Garza may not be in the running for the nation's number one team, but he's number one in plenty of people's hearts. Find out just how popular the Hawks' big man was today, coming up next in sports. Finally, today is opening day in Major League Baseball, and if we had a game in Sioux City today, it would not have been too bad of weather. That said, in the first game of the season, Cleveland at Detroit, well, let's just say they would have loved to have been playing at Lewis and Clark Park. As things started calm enough over at Comerica, but by the bottom of the first, things changed. Miguel Cabrera taking 2020 AL Cy Young winner Shane Bieber yard. Cabrera thought it was a double. Slides into second because the snow was that thick. Tigers go up 2-0. Top of the ninth, Roberto Perez finally getting Cleveland on the board. Two runs shot out to left. The Tribe trailing 3-2. A little later, Indians down to their last out. Tying run at first, but Cesar Hernandez, the high pop here, and that'll end the ninth inning rally. Tigers open the season with a 3-2 win. I love these highlights, Jake. I spent six years in Michigan, uh, about eight <laughs> hours north of there, but that's so typical to have snow. Yeah. And then you had sun and the beautiful uh, highlights towards the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, a lot of social media teams in that kind of Ohio, Detroit area yep. posting a lot of their diamonds <laughs> covered in snow. Uh, still cool to see. What an opening it day. It does happen. Thanks, Jake. Stay with us. We'll turn to Scott next. Quick update on that evening forecast up after this live look from our tower cam atop the Ho-Chunk Center. 
Another windy one. Uh, you can see a little bit of a shake on our tower cam at a unique angle of downtown Sioux City. Yeah, looking northward from the Ho-Chunk Center. Thought I'd turn the camera around. Yeah. Luke's there in the background. You're right. Exactly. Well, pretty nice night out there. We should see our temperature fall to 34 in Sioux City. Rebounding to a high of 70 on Friday. Sunny skies, breezy once more. 70s and 80s expected here in the short term. And then things start to change around the middle of next week with a chance of some storms. All right, Scott, thanks. Don't be fooled tonight. <laughs> we will be back at 10. Yes, Guaranteed. we will. And you'll be able to catch Tim's uh, latest Siouxland story. Until then, have a great evening.